Well hello, it's your host Jim Adesma and we're back into From the Depth. I have been improving the game for a while, so this is the last real progress update of this uh, series. And I just want you to post some suggestions of things I should test or add before I publish the ship on the workshop. So the next video about this series will be the last one. So make sure to post your suggestions so that I can make this ship the ultimate version of itself. All right, so here we are. This is the ship. This is the Gimle and of course we had some improvements from the previous versions as you might imagine. Now, uh, last time, I almost didn't remember, but last time we did some battle testing and um, well, sorry for the delay between this episode and the last episode during this series, but that happens. I needed to test this ship extra carefully and see what things I could improve. Because I really wanted to make sure that this version of the ship is actually a good one that I'm going to uh, put up for the battles. Uh, because basically I felt with the Draconia it had so many flaws that I could have addressed earlier that it felt like uh, the Mark II was, was just so much better than the, the like newer ships um, that the Mark II was so much better than the Mark uh, One, so I thought it was really nice to kind of have have that. Now let's see here. Uh, the cutting point still doesn't. No, it doesn't work. Well, that's sad. Anyways, what we what we can do here? We can just see the armor here. We have a lot of wedges here. And this armor scheme isn't bad. Um, it is, however, adapted for not very strong kinetic shots. Um, so I think that the, the type of damage we are more likely to actually get damaged from is not any kind of sandblasting or armor piercing. Uh, like armor piercing high explosive things which I actually made this for the things that will damage us and actually make a lot of damage is cram shots and this is not helping a slight bit with cram shots and thus it is providing a lot of unnecessary materials spent for this armor so what I have deemed is this armor to be ineffective too expensive and I know a lot of you have said that Jimmerism, come on, you're building a big ship. You should actually have thicker armor. And you know what? I'm not listening to you. So we are starting to strip away the armor here. You can see that here are the wedges. There is just so many blocks here, so many blocks here. And most of these blocks ain't doing jack shit, to be quite honest. It's, it doesn't make sense. We also have some sections of heavy armor, wedge armor here, to really back some important components behind of it. But I am thinking this is a waste of material. So yes, uh, maybe it's good for some ships to have thicker armor, but when we are, when we are facing crams, come on, mate, you can't armor against that. Whatever you do, the cram shot, the doom cram shot will get through. So we are opting for redundancy, which was the plan with this ship from the beginning. And that's something we should uh, continue with because that's one of the core values with this ship. It's size, bulk and redundancy. And then we don't need to spend a lot of armor uh, cost really because we won't stop the cram shell. Yes, it will help with armor piercing shells from APS cannons, but not much more than that. Yes, it will help with fragments that are really steep. Um, it will help a lot against heat shells. Uh, we, we, in our tests, uh, this was one of the most effective armor types we could have against heat shells. And yes, that is true. But still, what is a heat shell going to do against this ship? I mean, this beast is huge. We won't be taken down by a simple, petty heat shots. Not even a like a thing that spams a lot of heat shots. So what I have been thinking is that we should probably make the armor thinner at the outside. 
because you may have seen the secret advisors wooden diff gun ships that just provides great performance and they basically have no armor the greatest armor some say is air and I'm starting to believe that a little more. And I'm not believing that completely because I don't think that's quite true. I think you can make a good alpha strike craft using a lot of diff guns, uh, but that lags too much, honestly. I know because I built a ship that uh, uses only diff guns almost. Not only, it has a lot of cramps, but it has a lot of diff guns. And it was supposed to go against the uh, Asusa Saturnus class ship, but it didn't work because it lagged too much when we had two of them. It just didn't did not work and that was because it had loads of diff guns so having diff guns and just wood and thin armor works well because then there is no weak point to really hit against but really when you're making ships that are also fun and using all types of uh, systems and methods in the game well diff gun ship is not the answer and they have a lot of weak points too but uh, what I wanted to say with the entire idea was that thick armor rarely wins, especially not during big battles. So yeah, that's that's the re that's my reasoning behind uh, not listening to uh, your thoughts about making the armor a lot thicker than it already is. And of course, this is a one-sider. If you didn't remember it, like this side is literally like alloy tetras and uh, metal blocks tetras and full blocks and a mix of them it's just really thin and as promised here you can see i'm actually removing the entire side of uh, armor the armor slab i developed for this project is removed and we have moved the cost of this ship to a flat two million so yeah the armor wasn't super expensive but i will remember it was a little bit too expensive with the armor uh, after the battle testing session so it had to be discounted uh, for anyways what i'm going to do is i'm going to actually use some of my armoring budget to armor parts that were damaged during the battle test so for example these laser tubes here, they have some slight armor, but they were actually easily damaged, which made our lamb and laser damage laser system go down easily. So these are going to get some armor. Uh, these areas here also need some uh, buff. And of course, nothing can get through to the AI core. So I think we're going to have some more era on top of that. Uh, someone also suggested that I should have era armor uh, inside the side of uh, this ship. And I'm gonna see if I can have one layer of staggered era in this uh, craft without breaking the uh, block limit of 100,000. So um, I'm also going to give you some rules in this video for um, what you need to adhere to if you want to participate in the open submission uh, Gimle battle. Basically, uh, battle the Gimle. It's, um, it's a little bit similar well, you know, Brenzo remade the Ragnarok ship and that was super cool and he had a kill the Ragnarok tournament. Now, I don't, I won't, probably won't do a real tournament. I most likely would just do a kill the Gimle. But if we have some particularly nice ships we really like, we might pitch them against each other um, anyways, because that can be quite fun. So yeah, there we have it. Um, we're going to move on to the next iteration. Uh, I will also say that some of the rules, um, I've been slightly inspired by Brenzo's rules, uh, like the altitude. Um, you can't build a submarine, basically, and you can't build an airship that flies too high, but I'm gonna give you the rules at the end of this video so you know exactly what to add here too. Uh, for the open submission and there is no deadline it's an open submission and that's also one of the reasons why there is not a real like proper tournament so yeah it's it's like that but anyways let's move on to the next iteration <laughs> all right so this is a weird little uh, session here you can see my fps is actually uh, fine because i went into here and i <laughs> clicked boost my performance <laughs> So if you think my game looks like shit, well, that's why. I hope you enjoy the 60 FPS. Um, I do. But in any case, um, I will say this. Uh, the texts and logos don't always work uh, on other faction colors. But I will say that Gimla looks basically great 
in any faction color, it still looks kinda cool. Now, this is a little weird thing. Uh, this is the first iteration we looked at during this session. And it is actually battling if I may ride with something. I may not. Uh, it is actually battling this thing, which is a test version. This is um, Gimle, working name Q44. And it is void armor. This is no armor. This is just one layer of metal. That's it. I wanted to test if it even matters if we have armor or not. Like basically, if I put armor on this thing, will it be improved at all? Like, does it matter? So that's what I did. Um, I added just one layer of metal, uh, nothing inside of here, nothing fancy, just one meter of regular metal, not backed by anything, just to compare how it does battle with the original design. So uh, this one, this ship has a cost, it's basically like two million, uh, of course, very cheap. So this is battling against itself, and I already ran this test, we're not going to, I'm not going to make you watch these tests. You don't know how many battles I've tried the Gimli with itself with. Like, I did different iterations of the ship and I put them against each other so that I can, like, compare which version of the Gimli is the better. So this is one of the reasons it has taken so much time for me to uh, get this episode out. Because I have literally run more than 10 tests where the Gimli battles different versions of itself. And this is one of them. Now, not to spoil any action you won't see anyways, but ma the armor actually matters. This version that has no armor actually loses uh, always uh, against this version that has uh, the previous armor. So by this test, we can conclude that yes, the Gimle should have armor. It matters if it has armor. So now we need to go to the next point, how to make the armor. And yes, I've literally used this clipboard to check things like check for excessive heavy armor, uh, add spawn smoke in the front, add uh, check diff guns and like everything, torpedo sit. This is like, I, I filled this block with like improvements and suggestions and stuff. So anyways, let's dive in. So this version, we have started to work on the internal, internal armor of the Gimlet. So basically here, if you go in here, you can see we added more armor so that we won't be killed by stray fragments uh, that often anymore. We buffed up some era in the front in case the, the, the AI gets sniped from uh, in front during the first frame. That would be really sad with charge lasers. Another reason we're adding spawn smoke in the front, but that will come in a later iteration. And you can see we have got some internal armor for that. And again, the laser units I talked about earlier, they have gotten a nice little box of alloy poles to have some weird angles against the incoming frags as well as give floatiness as well as activate any armor piercing um, armor piercing heat shell so yeah that's that's what we've been working on here and again some uh, internal heavy armor that i had before has actually been uh, removed and we have some wooden barriers inside of here actually to detonate uh, shells um, perhaps before they deal any super weird damage. Anyways, that's what I've been doing. And that leaves the next point. How to build the armor so it kind of works against most things. I already know that I cannot stop a cram shell. So I will try to make a uh, armor that is much cheaper, but is still decent against kinetic damage types like armor piercing uh, with a payload. So uh, armor piercing with a payload is best tackled with ERA. So I decided to try and develop an armor pattern that we can use inside of the side hole of the Gimle that has ERA in it. So that will basically negate enemies APS shells, which is great. So these are three different variants uh, of uh, armor that could be used. And we have a shell popping up there. So we're just gonna reload here 
And we're gonna fire a shot. And we're going to do like this, of course. I, I'm just wondering, like, okay, we're, we're turned off. Let's try again. There we go. It gets destroyed. Very nice. We'll go to the next one that only has wood. And you can see it has the same effect. Actually, less blocks are destroyed in this test. But um, you can see that these wooden blocks are actually very damaged. So they would get easily damaged uh, during the next blast. And here we have this one. Which has the amazing effect of having a well wood-backed metal uh, area, which uh, I have been testing in earlier things. Works like a spore liner. In this case, it don't, but we get some slight boost from the wood to the metal, and backing metal with wood is actually quite efficient. You know the wood metal checkerboard pattern. Well, it turns out it works better with layering having one layer of metal backed by one layer of wood. Uh, so that's that that's actually better. So this is like the upgraded and more simple shakerboard armor, but a very thin layer. So yeah, that's pretty decent. And if we run the tests again, we can just see here, we go back here. We're gonna do a blast there, deletes those blocks, blast there, deletes those blocks, and blast here, and deletes those blocks. So I feel that having an extra layer of wood here kind of improves it quite a lot. On top of that, this one has alloy blocks and these alloy blocks don't take much more damage than those metal blocks that were here. So technically this armor is, is thicker and better, but in terms of floatiness, I think this armor will perform better <clears throat> for less. So it is a little bit cheaper and it's a quite bit lighter. So I think we're gonna go with this type of armor for the Gimla. So with those tests, which I have been doing um, a lot, I actually was intended to upload an empirical testing video about this itself, but uh, I did that in secret instead. So here are the fast results. Anyways, mm, let's move on to the next iteration. And there we are. This is the next iteration of the Gimla. And I have started to add armor here. I also decided to add a layer, like here, to a thin layer of just uh, these uh, beam slopes of alloy to provide some deflection points for fragments, alternatively armor piercing, piercing things. So when they blast through and kind of penetrate, that they deal less damage since we already know that shots will come from almost a 90 degree angle. Why is we should have an angle? That's also the reason why we had all of those uh, wedges before. The problem with the wedges was one, a little bit too expensive, two, a little bit too heavy because it was metal, and three, um, well, it only gives a great buff if the enemy is using kinetic APS and since they're probably gonna use cram, well, whatever. So, but I added that, I think it's worth it. Uh, but I did realize one thing. Here is my armor. It looks like this. One meter of metal, one meter of wood. Then we have staggered era with alloy. Gives floatiness and good protection from APS. The only problem with this is that we cannot cover the entire side of this. If we do that, we're going to exceed budget. And I don't want to remove any weapon systems uh, to uh, basically have less firepower. Right now we have a firepower um, of 1687. And I, I don't want to have less than that, I hope. So uh, what I did instead is that I have looked internally where we should be able to actually protect. So of course we want to protect our turrets. So in front of the turrets, we're going to have the staggered era. And this turret, well, it, it doesn't start from the bottom. It's, it actually starts from the middle of the ship because it's the same turret. So we don't need to have staggered era all the way down. So what I'm basically doing is that I'm putting the staggered era pattern wherever I need to have it and skipping it where I don't need to have it. And hopefully this method will be able to have a cost efficient but still effective armoring scheme. Ah, finally it is restored to its former glory. We have the Hesh deflection uh, 
tetras on top of here. No, these are not tetras, these are uh, square corners. And uh, in a previous episode we could see how they can be used to deflect uh, a hash direction. So what I basically did is that in the internal armor where I don't need to have staggered era, there is only like one meter of metal and one meter of wood. And then we have like one of this and basically very thin armor. Yeah, so that's what we did. We got some alloy on the side and we got some wood on the side here too. So that's what I've uh, opted for basically. Staggered era where we need it and basically no armor where we don't need it. So you can see this patch, nothing important behind here. I have small patches here to make railguns not take out some of my LAM systems too easily. But really, it works fine with this type of empty space, it really does. And I shouldn't say too much because we're of course going to test this version against Q42 before I uh, upload the submission. Not in this video though, but probably in the uh, video where we're gonna release it. We can probably show some of the final fixes and suggestions that you guys have asked me to test or change. In any case, that's basically that. I think I did some improvements for the internal armor as well, possibly. So we have some barriers here and there. Um, meet the connections there. Yeah, I, th I think that's completely fine. Oh, and one thing, that, that's what I wanted to cover too. Um, we have some staggered era. Okay, that's, that's in the next iteration, never mind. Oh yes, yes it is. In the front, I added some staggered era so that when we get shot from the front during the first blast, a railgun can't handicap us too much. It's going to kind of stop there. So I thought that was kind of reasonable to actually have here. Maybe we're gonna add some more staggered era in the lower bottom front. Uh, we'll see. Our only problem right now is that uh, this iteration is actually over budget. It can be max 2.0. One nine something like it can't be 2.2 something then it's over budget and as you can see I've solved this issue barely this is borderlining in the uh, the max allowed rating but what I did to make it a little bit cheaper is that you can see the turrets that I had here we had the stealth daggers here and I uh, replaced them with a with a type a turrets uh, the C-class type A turrets, so they're, they're back here. Really cheap, doesn't do much, and the previous ones didn't do much either. The problem with the previous turrets was that um, they were not able to get through serious sieves systems, and they were still kind of expensive. So when we're really building something that can get through like heavy sieves and interceptors and stuff like that, we basically need doom cramps. That is the entire reason why we had to scrap the uh, crushers. And, uh, or was it the crushers? And no, 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 that's, yeah. Maybe, yeah, the crushers. We had to scrap the crushers and replace them with the detonators instead, uh, just to limit the amount of shots we had. Um, the crushers were great against smaller vessels, but we're not, when we're up against heavy sieves, uh, one shot uh, beats it all. So yeah, that, that's that's why, that's why. So we made those turrets cheaper. Um, I think we discounted some other system somewhere too, perhaps somewhere. But basically, um, we made it meet, meet the budget, basically. We also removed some of the metal beams at the side where it doesn't take any fire with just uh, well metal square corners like this because it didn't make sense to spend on full beams here really. Just didn't make sense. So yeah, that's some improvement. Another thing we have been working on is that these missile interceptors in the back that was to, supposed to target torpedoes, they just didn't work very well at all. So I have been starting to develop some different uh, types of methods to shoot at potential incoming turrets, uh, torpedoes, I mean. Here, for example, we have a kinetic autocannon that uh, if not able in combat against torpedoes, 
will shoot against the enemy's ship underwater. So it actually has a function. And it's, it's basically shooting kind of accurate uh, heavy head shots like this. You can see it's heavy head, stabilizer fins, super cavitation, dealing some damage to torpedoes. Um, not shooting too fast. How fast is it shooting? Six seconds between the shots, but still does decent damage and helps. Uh, during some tests against the strongholds torpedoes, they still got through, however. So I started to also develop a diff gun, a diff flak cannon with a super cavitation module so that we can actually use a diff flak system to target incoming uh, torpedoes. And this system is, of course, super cheap um, because it's a diff gun with very minimal armor. So yeah, I actually had better luck with this uh, flak diff guns against torpedoes. So I ended up adding more of them and less of the kinetic system because the kinetic system still costs ish 6,000 per turret. The commissioned officers can see them <laughs> if you want to download it. I think, I think, I'm not sure if they are in the files actually, they might, I will update them. In any case, that's basically that. And I added a cool little shield here. But in any case, uh, what I did now is that I did a little combat testing against a random Megalodon and realized that one, it doesn't look cool because it sits too low in the water. And this doesn't affect performance. I know that. But for me, looking cool is pretty important as you can see from this hall. Looks better in high settings. But anyways, I elevated its, com its like altitude. It's of course using up props because in this tournament um, or this uh, challenge, the Gimle uh, battles, using air pumps is completely banned because it lags too much on my system. I can't record that. So when I build large ships, I sadly have to rely on passive float or up props. Water pumps lag too much. Having one of those or a helium pump on your ship will immediately disqualify you from participating. So just make sure that you don't have it on your ship. Like make sure, go into the list, click the, the shift E, go to block counter and make sure that you do not have a water pump or helium pump present here. And if they're present, it's bad. Even if they're deactivated, they still cause lag. I tried it myself. It's super weird but they cause lag deactivated too. But in any case, that's how it is. Uh, this is also where you check how many repair bots you have. Uh, more about that in the rules soon. But when making those tests with a higher altitude, you can see now they are precisely residing just above the red line where it should be. And this deck is actually always above water as it should be. In any case, uh, doing that meant that we actually require more power. When, when in battle, the power levels went too low. So I had to remove three of the propellers here in the back and I decreased its turning uh, rate a little bit. So it's slightly slower and slightly less agile. Um, otherwise we'll need to invest in a lot more engines and then I need to uh, remove some firepower and I don't wanna do that again or uh, at all. I don't want to do that, yeah. What we also did is I've installed a somewhere here. No, that's another iteration, never mind. So that's that. There we have it. Do you see this? Well, that's a mimic, but down here somewhere, we have a spawn smoke system. So now this vessel provides spawn smoke in the front. It's gonna spawn with a nose to the front and this should really make it so that a, a charge laser can't crit us in a very sad uh, way. I hope, hmm, maybe I need more spawn smoke because I'm actually not sure if the smoke protects everything in front of it. Like if we go forwards here and we got the smoke here, will it protect everything in front of it? or does it only protect things in this area? Because I just realized it may possibly only protect things in this green area, which would be bad. Then it means I would need some spawn smoke here too at the first turret. Yeah, I probably need to add that. I need to write it down. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, please tell me that in the comments if you happen to know the details on that, however. 
But in any case, that's that's some things that have been done. Maybe I need to improve the spawn smoke a little bit. I'm hoping that this will protect the ship from the front, the entire ship. But again, please tell me because I'm not completely sure about this now when I uh, realize it because let's actually check the values. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking that the smoke only reduces AP to the blocks uh, within its green vicinity and that uh, we basically need more spawn smoke in that case. And this basically means that uh, when we're moving, the smoke gets reduced, um, the effectiveness, but it doesn't move. So having smoke in the front of the ship, like in the nose here, won't like flow behind it and cover and envelop the ship in smoke. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, well, anyways, uh, that's 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 how that is. It's a little bit weird, but again, please, uh, please enlighten me if you know. And here we got a test mini iteration of the previous design. And you may wonder what's the difference between this. Well, what I did for this craft is that I disconnected each of the lamps. So the lamp systems on, on this build is actually disconnected. It has the same cost as the previous iteration over there. And the only difference is that it, can, it can't use its lamps. This also means that the laser's full potential will be outputted in damage laser. So the damage laser on this iteration is actually much stronger than this by the simple fact that not a single piece of energy is used to power the lamps. Uh, so um, this is a test I have been running a good couple of times too, which I of course won't necessarily show you again because this is a slow battle, which may not be very interesting for you and absolutely not interesting for me because I already know the outcome and I will um, Spoiler alert for a battle you won't see, but basically a lot of people have been suggesting that for really large ships you should not waste anything on lambs because at this scale lamb should not matter. But from my tests uh, with the, the Gimle versus the Gimle, the ship that doesn't have lambs, this one over here, always loses. So it's increased damage potential from only using the lasers as damage lasers doesn't really uh, provide a benefit. The lambs actually decrease the damage we are taking by quite a lot. So I've done some tests and I've come to the conclusion that lambs are worth it, even at this scale. Even though a lot of people have been saying it shouldn't be worth it. But that's, uh, that's, that's that I guess. What I did, by the way, is that I have been putting the damage lasers and the lambs lasers on the same laser system uh, to save costs. If it, however, was that we had a lamp system that was separate from the laser system, I probably think that the cost of that system would have not been worth it. But having the lamps and damaged lasers on the same system actually seems to be a great way to save costs. So there we have it. Lamps, yes. But I will, however, say that it's not weird that people come to the conclusion that lambs are not worth it because the difference isn't very huge, as you can see here. The system with no lambs can still win and sometimes it's up to luck. Now, this battle, you can see that the system with the lambs connected up actually uh, is only one percentage in front of the other one. Now two. But uh, from my experience with my tests with the Gimle, it seems that it takes a couple of minutes and quite far into the battles, it's concluded that the lamp system is able to provide so much uh, support that it doesn't, like, it works. Wait, what? Did I mark up this save? This lamp is still online. It shouldn't be online. I disconnected this. Well, whatever. 
I ran this test many times, uh, so I'm just gonna delete those versions uh, because even though I um, apparently this save does have this this part of the lamp system still connected up, which is a little bit bad, but yeah. I ran this test many times, so I already know that full lamps is better than no lamps, yes. And there we have, it uh, has increased to a 5% difference. Oh, I can't explain what I did with those save files. Why, why is one lamp system still? I don't know. In any case, whatever, you don't care. Uh, I guess, but we should now be going through the rules uh, if you want to start building on your craft to submit it in and do keep in mind that it will take some time before your ship will be turning up in a battle because I have a lot of pre-built craft that don't actually adhere to the rules so they will lag a little bit but I still want to run this against the Ragnarok for example Titan Slang, Draconia and lots of other stuff so, um, because we need to know, is it better than the Draconia? Of course, we need to know that. But in any case, um, let's, let's take up the rules here. Right, so uh, here we have the rules. We'll, we will be going through them uh, right now here. And I will post this in the game events in my Discord later too. And uh, they will of course be easily accessible in the last video of this series, which will also provide a link so you can download the Gimla for yourself. So basically, here we have Gimla Open Seas, Open Seas build rules. So, uh, naval ships or low flying airships, um, your submission should work in naval setting, uh, but cannot submerge. Uh, it also can't fly higher than 500 meters if it is an airship. So um, I thought that was some cool rules Brenzo used. I talked to him with him a little bit, and uh, yes, why not? Why not allow low-flying airships? High-flying airships, no, and submarines, no. That's a completely different like game. No cheese. No one-meter tetra spams. You can't spam fill areas to aim points booth that will be uh, banned intentional intentional obvious aim point, spoo aim point spoofs will be banned so no internal water propellers or acipods so you can't have propellers and stuff on spin blocks uh, stuff like that no spin clipping at all and uh, all other weird cheese things you should not use if you know th something is cheesy it's banned She's tactics is not allowed in this tournament. So um, if you're wondering something, you can ask, but having the obvious she's tactics banned from the get-go, of course, is, is a no-brainer. So uh, I don't like the idea of having a max block count, but we need some kind of block count. Otherwise, it lags too much. Uh, like if someone pops in with like quarter million blocks, it will lag for me. Now, block count isn't such a big deal, so I can have a pretty high block count. So you can have maximum 100,000 blocks, which is a lot, should be enough. But some of you have already complained, but I'm sorry, I will not be able to allow huge things of only wooden square corners that will just lag too much. So 100,000 block is the block count. No extreme missile or interceptor spam. Hint, use medium and not so many small. So basically, uh, if you have too many missiles in the air, it will lag too much. And of course you should have a lot of interceptors on your craft, you wanna protect yourself, but you can't have too many of them. So basically, if you have one unit of small interceptors, that amounts to four missiles. Um, and it still has less power than like one medium missile. So, so just use medium missiles as much as possible. You can use a couple of small ones, you, you can do that, it's okay. But uh, try and use more medium ones. And if you're having uh, missiles to deal damage, try to make them, or torpedoes, try to make them as large as possible. Probably you wanna have large or huge ones if you're gonna have a lot of them because the Draconia is one of those examples on 
how to use a lot of missiles to really lag someone's game. So I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I have done that in the past, and that's why I know it lags. So yeah, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's tips from experience. No water pumps or helium pumps whatsoever. So uh, yeah, like not a single one. You can't have one present on your build. It doesn't matter if it's deactivated uh, or not used. You cannot have helium or water pumps present on the build. It will cause lags. Now, the material cost is under 2.2 million. That means 1.2.1 XXX, not 2.2 XXX. So the maximum value is probably like something like this. M of course. Yep, and then we also have a maximum two repair bots. So your build can only have maximum two repair bots. Pretty few, but that's what we're doing. Not a lot of repair bots. Campaign crafts uh, generally have no repair bots, so it does make sense. No spawners, no drones, or no docked crafts, or separators, or anything like that, because this is a single ship means single ship battle, and a lot of sub object, uh, sub uh, sub vehicles will cause a lot of uh, lag. Having additional vehicles makes it lag more. Like we can see with a Ryujin class super battle carry, it lags a lot, and it has some drones. Yeah. No extreme sub object spam. So of course you can have a lot of turrets, you should have a lot of turrets, but you cannot have like 200 diff guns as your armaments, because I know from experience that that lags too much. And no intentional melee is allowed, so you cannot try to deal melee damage. Uh, no video screens and cameras present on the battleship. You know when you put a little camera on your ship and you put a video screen so that you can see uh, the outside from within your ship? Well, having those wireless cameras with the screens, they cause a lot of lag. So they're banned. Thank you. Uh, ships cannot play videos or audio sources like YouTube videos and stuff like that. Same thing with those little screens. They just cause too much lag. The Ryujin has a really cool song playing when it's in battle, but it causes too much lag. So no video screens playing any video or audio <clears throat> in your ships. Uh, you can't have video screens. Yeah. Uh, and because of this, I realize uh, that it may be a little bit boring for aesthetical reasons, and we won't see those aesthetics when we're battling. Uh, so, that's why I have a little fix for this that will be popping down right now, soon. So, when submitting the ship, any lights and smoke generators, not the smoke for protector, protection, the cool smoke stacks, like you can see on the gimlet. All lights and aesthetical smoke generator, generators must be turned off. They must be switched off. They can be present, but they need to be turned off. And they cannot activate during the battle since they cause a lot of unnecessary lag. So what I done is if you have a decorated version with nice interiors and lights and uh, cool smokestacks like the Gimla have, um, basically if you have a lot of lag stuff, remove slash turn off that and give me a battle version. Uh, and then you can also submit a parade version with all the lights and the video display screens and um, Yeah YouTube music you can't use copyrighted things. That's another rule You can't have anything copyrighted that will make it so that the video can't you know be shown uh, But anyways, uh, you can pr submit a parade version that looks cool that has the smoke generators has the light has the video players cameras smoke effects, everything working. So if you want to have that for aesthetical reasons, submit a parade version and I will go through and look at that version uh, before we start a battle. And I'm gonna use the battle version um, where it's actually in the battle. 
And of course, for those versions, it should only be an aesthetical difference. They should not be completely different ships, most uh, preferably. Because when I look through the parade version, I will judge your um, armaments when we go through the cool looking version, because that looks better. And I will check that your parade version and the battle version is basically the same ship. Uh, otherwise, uh, you might need to resubmit and so they are like the same ship. Has the same firepower and armaments and armor, basically. If that makes any sense. But yeah, I think I explained it good enough. If not, you can ask me in the comments. Uh, and also, if your ship lags too much, even though if it adheres to the rules, if it somehow is able to do some game-breaking thing, so it lags too much, I need to cancel the battle because if I can't run it, I can't run it. Deadline. This is an open submission. Uh, I will only start accepting ships after the next uh, the next video is out when uh, you can download the Gimlet 2. And then I will start accepting the ones, but submit it whenever. We will be probably be running some of these cool battles for a good while, I think. So, uh, next is ships must be submitted to me via Discord, DM or email. Send the point dot blueprint file. So go into your game file and find a blueprint file. If you don't know how to do this, I have a tutorial that explains how to find this and how to copy it and how to send it. So send the blueprint file to me via Discord, uh, direct message or email. Do not send me a workship workshop link. I don't like workshop links because I think Steam Workshop for From the Depth absolutely sucks. The integration is bad. Send me the blueprint file, please. The battles uh, will be best of three, so now we come to the battle rules. Uh, all ships will spawn with the bow towards the Gimlet's bow, so they will sp spawn nose to nose basically. Uh, so Gimli is a one-sider, but it still spawns nose to nose. Uh, make your ship maneuverable enough to avoid a collision. This rule is because the ships will close in on each other, and that is much more entertaining uh, than far away orbiting battles. And I want to thank Menti for these tips, because I felt like it would be better with having them nose to nose. And I talked with Menti a little bit about it, and that's probably the most famous tournament organizer in From the Depth. Um, and he's, he really knows his stuff. And he also usually spawns ships with nose to nose for this reason, so that we don't have far away orbiting. So basically, if you want, if you want a uh, nice orbit, well, then you need to spend on maneuverability and speed, because you're not getting that uh, optimal orbit for free, basically. You will be given 500,000 materials uh, when we start the battle. Yeah, so that's the that's the given material limit. Uh, you need to be able to win within 15 minutes of in-game time per battle. If a ship doesn't win within 15 minutes, it's, uh, it's more like a draw. So that's the rules. Um, hope that wasn't too boring, but uh, that's the rules. Will be accessible. We'll post them later in the Discord, and they will be accessible easily with uh, the video that will post the Gimlet for the public. So with that, I will just say good luck building, and hope you have enjoyed the series so far. And post those suggestions in the comment on what I can improve, and I will do that hopefully. And the Gimlet will be. The Gimle will be completely finished and we're gonna have some great battles with this ship. My greatest ship so far. So, anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Leave a like and I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jimmy Desen, and I'm signing out.